Today we're going to be going over two big stories in regards to the Nintendo. One, maybe the primary one you clicked on here for, has to do with a potential concept for Switch 2 that I, I, I think is interesting and possibly can be used in a cross-gen situation to help Switch 2 interact with a base Nintendo Switch. That can be really fascinating, and it comes from a Nintendo patent, so it's at least an idea Nintendo has floated around. And then on top of that, we have some news about that person who was arrested in Kyoto, Japan for death threats to Nintendo. We have some now details behind it. Charges were filed. It's pretty fascinating. Now, before I dive into these stories, I just want to thank you guys for being here. If you're enjoying all this Nintendo news and goodness, I would appreciate it if you would drop a like and subscribe to the channel. We are on our road to hopefully get like 150,000 subscribers this year. That would just be amazing. You guys are amazing. I love your smiling faces. And let's get into the news. So as we glance here, we got this U.S. patent that was originally filed all the way back in 2021. So it's a continuation of application 17 slash 363 comma 786 filed on June 30th, 2021. And now the patent is called 11 thousand nine hundred and two blah, blah 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 right all those numbers there that's fine but they published this on april 18th and it was actually filed on december 28th this republication with updated information and what you really get into is is this idea here of a host device and three other devices and there is a concept at play if you actually read the text of this patent there's a concept at play where this device is streaming information of some type, including actual frames of data, over to these other three devices. Now, what are those other three devices? Because up here, they just refer to it as like peripheral things. So as we come down here, we're going to see how you can have two separate clusters of host devices with three devices attached. You can have these two devices communicating to each other and then hosting these separate clusters where all six of these players, seven if you include the host device, are communicating, or eight I suppose if you include the host device, are communicating through this device together. Uh, you're seeing here where there's some cross communication where these two devices are not communicating, but this device is communicating to this device, which is also communicating back and forth with that device and double communicating with this device. Kind of wild stuff, probably because this is communicating information from this device to this device sort of this whole wild setup of communication parameters. And you're seeing how they have this set up on the PCB. Uh, they have these data sheets, these idea sheets, showing what each one of these things are doing. You have your broadcast device, and these are your receiving devices, and the different types of setups you can have for the different types of information being distributed between these devices. But th everything becomes clear as we keep scrolling down when we get to an image coming up that shows that this these aren't just like peripheral devices these aren't like extra accessories that you would be buying for nintendo switch 2 there are actually entire systems and you can see an example here i know that this is kind of wonky i might flip these for you guys in editing but if you look at what it says it says communication device 100 underscore 2 user is inviting participant in match game do you participate? User A approved your participation match game. Match game is started. Same thing over here. Do you invite participant in a match game? Yes or no. User B desires participation in a match. Do you approve? So what you're seeing here is this idea that you could ask to join games from other devices because if you look at these they're obviously looking at you have two host devices and two external devices but they're the same device suggesting that we're talking about a platform that's the same platform so we're not talking about like peripheral add-ons we're talking about everybody who has a given device whether it's a switch 2 a switch etc okay obviously you can focus in on the d-pad and the wonky buttons these are obviously just concept drawings they do these a lot where they have these weird looking concept drawing things and never really address the purpose of any of the buttons because the purpose of this patent isn't the buttons or even the what device this is it's the idea of how these devices can communicate together so as you see here here's where you have two host devices working together simultaneously with four different outside users two users per cluster and they go into all of this stuff here where you can see you know you how, how it gets configured through wireless connections and the biggest takeaway when you go through here like it says user is currently inviting player is player user a user b user c 
they're talking about using their own separate wireless communication, not your typical you know, wireless network where everyone's connected to the wireless network and you're sort of linking up through the local network. They're actually talking about the host devices creating their own wireless network. Now, this isn't a new concept in general for a device going one-to-one. -one. Nintendo has allowed that in the past with some of their handhelds where you could do local play one-to-one -one with a device without either of you being connected to an internet network. It could just find each other's devices, but there really wasn't a host device in there. That was more of a peer-to-peer, direct device-to-device -device thing. This is obviously all a bit more complex. Now there's a lot going on and I, I read through some of the text. I didn't get through all of it this time. Look, it's pretty hard to get through everything. And I just wanna note that there's a lot of very fascinating things in the text talking about how this potentially is communicating from one device to a slightly different device, which to me is where I started to get into the idea that this could be about a Switch 2 being a host device and then communicating with other Nintendo Switches to let them in in some sort of matchmaking sense. To me, this makes it like the host is like kind of like the host server for whatever game you're going to play. Because traditionally you connect online, like even when you do local play, you know, on um, Splatoon or whatever, right? Uh, you're still kind of using Nintendo's online servers a little bit. This is where you're sort of turning your own device into that local server that others can connect to. And yes, you are streaming data back out to everyone else, including game frames. Now, I don't think this is straight up what do you say, game streaming per se, because everyone still has their own device, but you are getting data to update the game you're seeing from the host device. So to me, this really looks like more of a being able to set up your device, your Switch 2 in this case, as a host platform for other users to come in and play a multiplayer game together, almost like, you know, a network server. I think that this is actually... Pretty cool, and obviously one shows that Nintendo isn't leaning into this always online thing that the rest of the world is leaning into, and two is potentially throwing this idea out there of cross-compatibility between different systems and being able to play different games together. I actually think this is really cool. Uh, there's a lot of technical stuff in there if you guys want to dig through. I'll put a link to it down in the description. And yes, I want to make sure I credit Mike Odyssey because he was the channel that I originally saw this on. I didn't look up this patent originally myself until after his video. Now, I want to dive into this other story here because this is a really sad story. This is about uh, the person who was arrested in Japan for death threats uh, against Nintendo employees that canceled Nintendo Live last year. And we're going to go over right to the Japanese news website, Google translated into English, and see what it says here. It says, breaking news, a Hitachi employee is in Ibaraki Prefecture is indicted for forcefully interfering with Nintendo's business to make people regret releasing, and I'm quoting this correctly, shitty games. On the 24th, the Kyoto District Public Prosecutor Office indicted a 27-year-old employee from Hitachi City, Ibaraki Prefecture, on charges of forcible obstruction of business for sending threatening messages to Nintendo uh, forcing the company to cancel a game event. According to the indictment between August 22nd and November 29th of last year, messages were sent to Nintendo official homepage inquiry form saying things like, I'm going to make you regret releasing such a crappy game to the world and I'm going to kill everyone involved. He posted messages such as, be careful, 39 times in total, and is said to have disrupted the company's operations. According to Kyoto Prefecture Police, two events sponsored by Nintendo, including a gaming event, Splatoon Koshin 2023 National Finals, scheduled to be held in Tokyo from December last year to January this year, were canceled, obviously in addition to Nintendo Live. I want people to think about this for a moment, how dumb this is. This is obviously somebody extremely upset over something Splatoon 3 related. I don't know what they're upset about. Maybe they're upset about the lack of support for Splatoon 2 anymore. Everything's pushed to Splatoon 3. Maybe they don't like the content in Splatoon 3 or the DLC or whatever the heck is going on, right? We obviously have no idea why this particular person is this mad over Splatoon. And we can assume it's Splatoon because, again, one of the events he was issuing death threats towards was literally a Splatoon event. The other one obviously being Nintendo Live, which was going to feature some Splatoon uh, tournaments and stuff. So this to me is just a level of 
engagement with a video game that I feel is unhealthy. If you are at the point that you want to literally kill people because of a crappy video game, so a game that you are upset with the quality of said game, right? You're literally just mad at the quality of a video game, and that makes you want to end people's lives. Now, obviously, I'm not saying this person would have acted on it. This kind of sounds like online rage being mad, being a bully, but let's say that you even had the thought cross your mind that you want to kill people involved with a video game that you don't like. You got other problems, man, and you're taking video games way too seriously. Look, guys, we all enjoy video games. We all want to play them. We all want to have fun. This is too far. And I think uh, any sane person can understand that no matter how mad you are at a company over a given product, wanting to actually end people's lives over it is not... That's messed up, man. You need help. And you need help big time. And uh, look, I don't know if this person would have actually did anything, but Nintendo took the threats pretty seriously because there were so many of them. This wasn't a one-off comment on the internet. This was literally 39 direct threats sent to Nintendo through their contact form. I, I, I understand why Nintendo was maybe a little afraid to do public gatherings because uh, they don't know who this person was and could have attended those events and did something bad to someone somewhere so uh sorry that this happened glad this guy was caught guys please it's just video games man it's not really the end of the world okay thank you guys for tuning in i am nathaniel robojance from nintendo prime and i'll catch you in the next video